If I ask you to name some colors or the color of a banana, you'd tell me a banana is yellow, right? Well, this is like weird, really, when you think about it. I don't know about your house, but in my house, the bananas are green when we buy them. And then they spend, you know, a day being yellow and then they're like brown spotted and eventually black things before we throw them out. So in their whole lifespan, they've spent very little time of their lives being yellow. But this is the color we encode. It's the color we think of. And in fact, it's so strong that it's the color we project onto the world around us. So color we know is not simply the light hitting our eyes because there's all of these what we can think of as cognitive influences that shape what, ex what, what you experience out there. My current favorite example of the interaction between um, art practice and the neuroscience of color is really a close reading of M Matisse. In many of his finished canvases, he actually leaves these little white bits of an unpainted canvas between painted marks. And it's a discovery he made because by introducing this little white buffer, you protect from color contrast, color induction, uh, you protect the colored marks so that they remain about the same in the finished painting as they were when he first made them. So as he's painting in the studio and he wants his apple to stay that color, he can paint the background lots of other colors and have the apple still stay that color by just not painting next to it, just leaving a little bit of white around it. So color contrast is the simple phenomenon that is when you, um, when you paint a mark, the color of the painted mark changes as you paint the background around the mark. And this is a problem that new artists struggle with, old artists struggle with. And that's because the color of the background unconsciously is changing the way in which the color of the foreground appears. And we, our brains do this effortlessly and unconsciously. So much so that you don't even think about the impact of the surround in shaping your experience of the object color that, that you're attending to. And that discovery, as it were, by Matisse, I think came about because of, you know, his struggle in the studio, working with paint, working with a visual system that has particular constraints on the way in which it computes light information to generate color. And the consequence on art history is that you know, it changed forever how we think about art, how we think about paint, how we think about what paintings are. We see that legacy in Rothko, where now he's gotten rid of everything except paint and canvas, just large fields of color. Right? At the time that Matisse was working, that would have been considered completely like crazy. I mean, like literally, it would be like, you, I don't know what that is. So you see, you know, the impact of these choices on art practice, the impact those choices make on the trajectory of our tradition, Western art history tradition. Um, but they also, in this wonderful way, produce this other discovery, which is that color is divorced from shape. So Matisse shows us, and then is extended through Rothko, shows us that you can take color completely out of shape. Right? The banana's color doesn't have to be attached to the banana. You can have a field of yellow and you can have a shape of a banana. And that the fact that we experience those things as together happens because of probably something statistical about their co-occurrence in the world, not because of something fundamental about their yoking in our brains. Because if they were fundamentally yoked in our brains, we would never be able to see the Rothko as a field of red divorced from shape.